Hello and welcome to the monthly Q&A. If you'd like to get your question answered in a Q&A like this one, then head on over to ask.fm forward slash Charmelade and I will do my best to answer your question as long as it's not too rude. Right, here we go. Question number one. This is from Lou. If someone liked you, how would you like them to tell you? Um, probably best not to because I am married. <laughs> and um, I've been married since June 18th of this year. And I've been with my partner for... Oh my God, I can call him my husband now. Um, I've been with my husband for like about 17 years. A really, really long time. Uh, we did split it up for like six months at one point and we really needed it like I think it's such a healthy thing to do in a relationship if you're if you're not in a good place and you're trying to work stuff out having kind of a big break can really help you see is it the wood for the trees you know you know what I mean right um, and I think it really can help to put things into perspective and it really did for us and it, it, it put us in a really really good place to move forward in our relationship because we were so we had hit like a, a brick wall and we weren't moving forward and we didn't know what to do to make it better and it wasn't that we didn't love each other anymore it's just that I don't I, it was like it just got really really like stagnant and unhealthy in a, in a just kind of neither of us were progressing in our lives but the six month break helped to give us like clarity on that and we went from like being in a really kind of almost like an immature relationship where we didn't really talk much about our feelings to each other or we weren't massively honest with each other we kind of just put up and shut up kind of thing and that's on both parts as well and then when we went into when we went into our new relationship when we got back together again um we had so much more honesty and it felt so much easier um anyway that's not what the question was about anyway moving on if you could say something to your younger self what would you say oh that's a really good question and I think all of us right now that have just heard me say that are thinking what would you say to your younger self right there's so many things that you'd want to say um, I guess just hmm so many things uh, I guess the main thing would be to just focus more and have more direction I feel like I feel like I kind of messed up where I floundered a lot in my early, um, in my late teens. When I left school, I remember walking home from school and it was the same walk that I did every day and as I walked down that hill and turned the corner to my house, I remember thinking, what do I do now? Like, what, what am I doing? I don't ever have to go back to school again and it's really weird. And I had been looking forward to that moment of like, oh my God, school's finished, never have to go back. But when I was in that moment, it was like, oh I didn't really like make a backup plan so I didn't know what I was doing and I floundered and I feel like I was just kind of keeping my head above water for about two years trying to figure out what the hell I was doing and um, <clears throat> I think that's why I never really got into the nine to five grind that a lot of people are in now um, I feel like I went into jobs that really suited me as like a night owl and just my personality and, and like also being very creative, as you know, if you work nine to five, and I know this sounds really, really like privileged, but if you work nine to five and you're a creative person, it can be so stifling on the soul. Um, and I'm not saying that I haven't worked nine to five because I have, and I hated it because I just felt so chained and so like my wings were just utterly clipped. And so I ended up taking jobs that worked better for me uh, time wise that freed me up more during the day so I was doing like night work and stuff um, but I, I definitely would have I wish I'd set out a plan I wish I'd set out a plan after school like learn to drive straight away um, because in the UK it's very different learning to drive from the USA USA is part of the school curriculum in the UK it's not and it's very very expensive to learn to drive I've probably spent the best part of five grand on learning how to drive um, and the test is insane like I failed my driving test three times however I have to put this in here my niece passed first time and her partner passed first time and I'm just so proud of them like I'm just so utterly proud of them it's such good news for this year or oh, last year now because it's 2023 um, but yeah I think 
advice to my younger self would just have a bit more direction and a bit of a backup plan, don't flounder. Oh, this question is from Lou as well. What is a perfect workplace for you? So that ties in so well to the previous question. So perfect workplace for me is this, like it's amazing, like being able to um, work from home and actually it is sustainable for me now. Like it, it I'd say since 2014, I've been self-employed working from home and I've every day, every week, every month, I've been learning how to manage what I need to do. And it, it is one of those things where no one else is going to motivate you or pat you on the back for what you've done. You don't get a pay rise. You don't get like uh, your boss coming down and saying, oh, good job. Or these are things that you can improve on. You just have to kind of figure it out as you go along. And that's been really fun. That's been something that I've really enjoyed doing. Like the main thing that I don't enjoy doing, though, is like when things go wrong with my computer, and I'm trying to call Maggie in IT, my dog, and she's just way too busy like playing with her toys and stuff to help me out. But working from home for me definitely is just, it's like the perfect equilibrium for my soul and like my mental health. Um, I don't know about you guys, but if you're quite an empathetic person, going out into an office environment or a retail environment, as much as you might enjoy it and you really care about your work and what you do, it's so draining, so draining. Like you come home and you have nothing more to give to anybody else. You've given it all in the day and now you're on zero. And all you can do is just sit on the sofa until bedtime. That's how I was when I was working retail and um, office work. It just, it, it zapped me, but singing injects me with life. I feel like when I sing and when I'm writing music and when I'm making videos and creating, I become energised. It's like the complete opposite of what office and retail used to do to me. I loved retail, hated office, loved retail, but this, it, it invigorates me. And so I know it's good for my soul. And when I can't do it, like if I get like a cold and I'm out for two weeks, I, I'm so ready. Like we've just had um, Christmas break and I'm just so ready to get back into creating and singing this is where i need to be do you get grossed out easily um not really because i i grew up being a bit of a stable girl so like i was always working with horses and i've always had animals so i'm not like grossed out by like cleaning and poop and stuff like that like it's never bothered me speaking of poop um maggie like my dog she's getting a lot older now she's 11 years seven months and um so she's been going a little bit downhill lately just a couple of health issues and things and um this morning i came downstairs to my kitchen full of just wet poop every it was so horrific i just it was so horrific but it doesn't gross me out <clears throat> actually it did a little bit it actually did because it was it was so pungent I'm so sorry if you're eating right now, but that did gross me out a little bit, a little bit. But usually I'm I'm fine. I can't watch um, shows where people are getting like cosmetic surgery or having um, operations and stuff because that does gross me out. That I'm like, oh no, I don't want to see it. Also, how do people watch those like pimple popper shows? There's some people out there that love them. How? Why? Why do you love them? Why do you love people having their pimples popped? I don't understand. Explain it to me. Tell me in the comments. Just don't, don't go into too much detail. This is from Slippered Guy. Oh, Slippered Guy. What is, I answered one of his questions before and I remembered his name because it was cool. What is the weirdest question you've been asked on this site? I don't know. I've been asked so many weird questions. I'm not even, like, the weirdest stuff. I can't think right now because this is Q&A number, like, I don't know. This is Q&A number 99, apparently. So um, I can't remember, but I do get some really weird questions on here. I have to really mentally prepare myself before I look at my questions. What are you going to do if it's raining outside and you're all alone in the house? Sounds like a song. What are you going to do if it's raining outside and you're all alone in the house? Um, I love it. Rain's my favourite weather. I, 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 I hate sunny weather. I really don't like it. Um, so when it's raining and I'm inside, I, I just love it. I love it so much. It makes me feel creative. It makes me feel inspired. It makes me feel cosy. But I obviously appreciate that it sucks for people that work outside. When looking for somewhere to live, what's something you have to have? That's a pretty good question. So I, when we moved here, one of the main things that I was really looking for was not necessarily a massive room to do singing in, um, but uh, a semi-detached house. So a house where I could sing on the outside 
this wall here is an outside there's nothing attached to it so I can be quite loud and I can sing and then there's a hallway and a room on the other side which means that the other next house is you know quite far away so I'm not going to be like annoying anybody singing like the same thing over and over what is the nicest place you'd like to go um <clears throat> well right now if we're talking about right now um last weekend I went to a really beautiful new place called Stourhead and um it's a like a it's a national park national trust park and um you can walk around the grounds and it is really really beautiful but we found like this other little like elusive walk elusive it's like a little hidden walk and you cross over a sty and then you, you you're in like a valley i wish i'd got some pictures maybe i did um but it's like it's a beautiful kind of valley with um trees on either side and you walk right to the end and there's an obelisk or it's not an obelisk I can't remember what it is it looks like an obelisk but it's not um, and it's it's just an old kind of ruiny thing and it, it looks really cool and I had such a great time doing that walk it was a five mile walk overall and we're gonna go back and do it this weekend I can't wait um, and we're gonna actually go a little bit further and see if we can head up to this place called Alfred's Tower uh, which is we haven't done the walk yet so we might get lost <laughs> um, so if you don't hear from me call an adult anyway that is it for this month's q a bit of a weird uh way to leave it but um also mysterious and might make you hang about for the next q a so if you'd like to get your question answered in a q a like this one then head on over to ask.fm forward slash and i'll do my best to answer your question i say it every q a but i do have a big um backlog so that's good though that's good have a wonderful week everybody and i will see you very soon bye